Does everyone have a beverage? Bill <laughs> Gosper is a man that needs no introduction. So I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> Who hasn't heard of Bill Gosper? Everybody has. Okay. Well, then maybe we'll just go right to Bill. There you go. Is this on? Okay. Uh, let's see. How do, you, how do you hold this thing tight at the same time? Maybe you can tell me about that. Oh. Uh, all right. So. Uh, on the upper right, okay, we have seven color torus. Each color touches the other six. Uh, it's the basis for the Selassie uh, toroidal heptahedron. Uh, and uh, now I need to scroll, which I didn't need to do before. Okay, and like sideways maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what this <laughs> is, uh, that, that is a, a demonstration that the continued fraction of the ratio of the perimeter to the second diameter of a regular decagon right here, okay? Uh, is, uh, has, is 3, 11, 11, 11, uh, which is 5 divided by the golden ratio, 3.09, which is a crummy approximation of pi. And so uh, by, by increasing the number of sides uh, on, the, uh, on the polygon, then you can uh, get, get more and more nearly the continued fraction of pi, which is, of course, what I was trying to get everybody to compute instead of decimal, but nobody would listen. Uh, so, uh, uh, so they just kept right on decimalizing after I computed 17 million partial questions of pi. So let's go back here and stop this thing about there. Uh, and maybe even uh, further. Okay, so there, there's your, your decagon. Uh, oh, look at that. It, it turns out that's that's a lot rounder than my screen here. I don't really know what's going on. And then over here uh, is uh, the peridol dissection proof of the Pythagorean theorem, right? Some of the squares. Uh, and so that's that needs to be more widely known. And then finally, uh, down here, a little uh, MIT history. There was a, uh, a tradition at MIT, uh, unwritten, extending at least into the 60s, that uh, on a multiple choice quiz, the answer is never none of the above. And so the name of the game was uh, design the correct answer to be so implausible that you were agonizing and tempted to guess none of the above and thereby screw yourself to the wall. <laughs> And uh, so in that spirit, I have the following uh, little quiz question, which is uh, this uh, two-dimensional uh, periodic timing. Uh, the question is, is it uh, a subtime or a refinement of a uh, regular time by uh, perfect squares or equilateral triangles or regular hexagons uh, or none of the above? And so is there anybody in here who can perceive this thing as dividing into perfect squares along color boundaries with nothing left over? Does anybody here uh, vote for squares? Uh, I've seen some squares, but they're not regular. Uh, well, there's no such thing as an irregular square, uh, except maybe <laughs> in the audience here. Uh, uh, so, uh, you vote for squares? Ah, uh, all right, so we managed to, to uh, uh, oh, why is this rocket? Lower that rocket. Okay. Um, well, okay. So we managed to see a fair number of hexagons. Uh, well, but they're not regular. Uh, they're uh, and they don't they don't exhaust the time. Okay. So that, that could be it. Um, so uh, for, so we only got we don't have any other square motors here. Um, no, no. No. Okay. So they're shifted like a third. It's it's got to be yeah. You know, it's got to be regular. It's got to be perfect squares or equilateral triangles or regular hexagons. Perfect. Okay. No no fudging. Perfect square shifted like a third of the way each. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh. Every strip is shifted. Oh. Ah. Uh, yep. Nah, you guys are just completely blind. <laughs> so the answer is triangles. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, yeah. Uh, so now, honestly, who who was going to say? Did it? Was anybody going to say triangles? Uh, because I actually just like these other guys were right. It's really squares. Uh, so. Uh, and anyway, um, so if I actually run the thing uh, there, you see it's, it's, it's actually fuzz. And uh, so uh, I, I actually then uh, tell you that the true answer to this question is not D none of the above, but E none of the above, because none of the above was wrong too. <laughs> and it, it must be true, else I couldn't say no tell uh, So uh, now, here goes, uh, I guess we just blow this away. Um, so now I need to get uh, a golly going here. So this is, boy, did that ever get scrolled. Holy cow. Uh, this guy needs 
to be told what happened to the screen. Let me just see what happens if I reload the... Uh, okay, so that, uh, that's okay. Um, it's all slower now. Let's see, maybe uh, if I say P, Control F. Ah, excellent. Okay, so uh, who here has not seen the dollar program? Anybody? Uh, is everybody? Oh, okay, great. Okay, you're in for a wonderful treat. Uh, if we just uh, run this thing here, uh, oh my goodness, uh, we saw some cash, what do we need to do? Okay, so it appears that the controls are set to no hyperspeed and auto fit, that's fine. Okay, so what we need to do here is start pumping up the speed uh, until now we're going uh, at four steps per tick, and now we're doing eight, okay, and so like that, okay. And so now, if we zoom in on here, uh, oh, well, first we'll zoom in over here, and we can see that these are uh, uh, period 46 glider duplicators uh, that are fanning out uh, delay line memory with this, this pattern stored in it. And then if we shrink down and we go over here, uh, this thing is being sunk into a bunch of eaters, and then we get the, uh, the actual Coke Galaxy figure uh, strobing in all eight phases here. And then if we down, uh, down shrink it a bit more here and over here, and we now rev up the uh, uh, the speed some more, let's see, that's two, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. let's just run on up to, uh, say, <laughs> 17. Now we get strobing, okay. Now, as I'm sure you all remember, two to the 17 minus one was the largest integer that fit in a PDP-1 word. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, if you try to go any faster than that, you overflow the negative numbers and the simulation runs backwards, uh, which, of course, is just a ridiculous coincidence. Uh, and so, uh, next, uh, a little bit of historical correction here. Let's see, do I have to? I probably have to stop this before I can do that. Okay. This uh, was the first. Uh, now, this one I actually think I'm going to have to go ahead at hyperspeed uh, and auto fit. Uh, so, uh, this was the first uh, nonlinear or superlinear growth device, uh, the breeder. Okay, so, uh, and what it is, uh, is. Uh, we back up again. Uh, it was 10 uh, cover trains, uh, five, uh, I guess uh, eight space rakes and two block layers, and we're just going to look at them. And, uh, and they're, of course, making this period of 30 guns. And it would be very reasonable for you to ask, why did I use such outlandishly uh, clumsy or uh, oversized cover trains? And the answer is, of course, this was the only cover train. Uh, in other words, most people think that the first cover train was a period 20 end device uh, with two lightweights and a single engine. Uh, now I'm going to type a shift delete here. If I can do that. Okay. But in fact, the first cover train was this object right here, uh, which is a period 32 end. Uh, so uh, I'll need to do that. Right there. So it's, it's that thing right there. So uh, just just wanted to clear that up uh, because it's amazing how many people you know, don't know that. Uh, now, uh, that was a breeder. It had, I think, uh, 4,000. Well, let me just do it again. Uh, uh, here, it's uh, population 62, excuse me. Uh, okay, 4,060. 4, okay, we could whack off a couple of hundred right here, and there would be a breeder, uh, maybe 3,800. There is 3,500, and it's four breeders. Uh, and watch what happens. This is Hickerson's. This is a modern you know, breeder. Uh, and so there's there's four breeders running like so, and uh, and they're interfering with each other in an interesting way. In fact, it's a very interesting way because uh, the population of this configuration is uh, let's now stop the zooming if we can. I guess I should let it go and, and just do uh, uh, this thing like this. Uh, these pauses, by the way, are, you can see up in the left, probably, right, it says changing information and changing uh, uh, resize and hash and all that. But, so it's basically upshifting during these pauses. Uh, if we actually go and look at this, uh, this is the 1 minus a third plus a fifth minus a seventh, the Gregory series for Arcan 1. So the population of this configuration is actually growing like pi minus 2 over 720 times time squared. Uh, so this thing is actually being pi in some sense. 